Apparently dressing a bit nice, sitting to the side with your legs crossed, looking into the camera like you've seen stuff and talking with an older man's Canadian voice makes people think you're wise and intelligent. And then a bunch of clueless youth latch onto you for direction and guidance. Jordan, please listen to me, Jordan. That's right, we're talking about Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, everyone. Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life is a book that sets out to guide the scummy lowlifes of society today so that they can find Most meaning in it. Most 20th century history indicates, as nothing else can... You done? The horrors that accompany... Okay, as I was... Faith in the idea Jordan! So I'm going to take it upon myself to do all 12 of Jordan... All 12 of Jordan Peterson's Rules for Life. You have one hour. In an hour? Jordan... <laughs> That's not enough time. Do it, or I'll set the walls on you. What? Rule one, stand up straight with your shoulders straight. Ah! Order is masculine <laughs> and chaos is feminine. Jordan, we all need to man up. I feel like that's a little behind our time. As a society, we've kind of moved past that way of thinking. Shut up and stand straight, you woman. Where, where's your voice even coming from? Rule two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. The story of the Garden of Eden shows that we were all touched with original sin. You can either seek heaven or be dragged down to hell. Stop waiting for other people to dig you out of your pitiful hole. Like, I've never read the Bible. I only found out last year that Jesus was not from Texas. Um, so I don't think that this religious language kind of draws a clear picture in my head. Just some feedback, a little bit of criticism, Jordan, because it's the 21st century. Jordan also writes with such aggression. Like, you know when you're perusing through a bookshop and then let's say you pick up a book, you read the first line and it says, stop waiting for other people to dig you out of your pitiful hole. I'm putting that book down. And also, Jordan, look, look at yourself, okay? Look at yourself. He looks like something you've left at the back of the fridge for years and just, you don't want to touch it. You don't want to think about it, but you just leave it there. It's almost comforting know it's, knowing it's about. You just see it every so often and go, yeah, that's my cheese, my, my uh, fridge cheese. Rule three, befriend people who want the best for you. Okay, so that's just basic life advice, but knowing it's Jordan Peterson, this is actually super profound and really interesting. Some of us are better beings. Some people are beyond help. If people are determined to screw up, let them. They're nothing to do with the divine purpose. So if I were to put that into action, what would I do with that? You all right? Yeah, uh, just having a rough time getting over this terrible addiction. I'm yeah, crazy. about that. Um, I don't really see how that sort of energy is good for me. Wait, what? Like, it doesn't really benefit me. So I think we should stop talking. I'm, I'm so confused right now. Yeah, uh, so I, I really need to be around people that want the best for me. And you're not it, so. What, what do you mean? Yeah, well, you're, you're nothing to do with the divine purpose. So let, I'm going to delete you of my contacts now. Rule four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not the useless person you are today. Face it, you're never going to be that smart. So don't compare yourself to someone who is. Okay, a bit weird. Start by getting on your knees to pray. Mm, no. Even if you don't believe in God. Why would I do it then? Atheists are merely people who are blinded to the true way of being. All right. There. You feel a marginally less useless already. Whoa, again, this religious messaging doesn't work on me. I'm, I, I, oh. Holy water, you're a sin. Jordan, was that you? Don't besmirch my name, bucko. Also, this chapter just feels like filler, even more so than the rest of the book. Sure, the idea of being a better person is a great message, but literally who is disagreeing with that? Jordan, oh my, stop. <laughs> Rule five, do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. No children here. Remember that children are born with original sin and have a huge capacity for evil. So intense. I, I really do appreciate that this man was a university professor rather than a nursery teacher. They need discipline if they're going to grow up to be even vaguely worthwhile humans and slap them if necessary. Don't listen to what the lefties say. Okay, Jordan. Whatever you say, just, just go along with it. He stops after a while. He just likes to pretend that he knows what he's saying. Daniel! Daniel, come here! Daniel! Come here now. Come on. Whoosh. 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 
Right, go go to your mum. Go on. Go on, Daniel. That was just my son, Daniel. He gets a bit <laughs> too excitable in shops, so I have to, you know. <laughs> okay, so he immediately makes it political and then throws in physical abuse as a valid solution. Guys, this is getting a little too real. He's probably done with his sentence and then someone irritated him, like his wife probably cooked the steak medium rare rather than well done. And then with that built up rage, he wrote, Don't listen to what the lefties say. Literally, no one asked. Did anyone ask? No. Rule six, set your house in order before you criticize the world. <coughs> Here is a screenshot of Jordan's house mid-interview. Jordan, maybe set your words in order before you preach them to the whole world. He says, Remember the story of Cain and Abel? No. Jordan, are you gonna, are you gonna tell us the story? No. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I apologize for all the squeaky noises you might hear, but all the holy water is built up on the floor. And every time I try to move it, Jordan just pours more on me. It's, it's a really toxic relationship we're having. Rule seven, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. With a quick Google search, expedient means practical, but immoral. Little lesson for you, in case you wanted to know what expedient means. Life is suffering. The book of Genesis tells, oh my God, like, constant just like religious preaching book of genesis told us long ago that the weary traveler sees evil in the eyes of hope if you succumb to the evil notions of the lord then you will see the way forward i'm pretty much i'm pretty much a priest so quit looking for shortcuts and start reading Nah, nah. It is like a weird uh, name that I can't pronounce. I think I think it's a f uh, philosopher. Okay, so to sum that up, he tells us to read the Bible, which is another book, and then tells us to read the work of a philosopher. Very original. So, what for this rule do I just like read read the Bible? I'm not doing that. The only time I read a Bible is when I'm in a hotel room and they have one next to the bed. Rule eight: Tell the truth. Or at least, don't lie. He says, To be honest, I'm scrabbling around for things. Okay, so you admit it. You finally admit that you are scrabbling around for things. Thank you for saying that. But my publishers tell me I need 12 rules. By telling you the truth about this, I am an improved being. Certainly better than you. Firstly, they did not say that. Secondly, why do you keep on slamming on us? We've bought your book, we want to better ourselves, and then we just hit with... You're a greedy slob, you need to better yourself. I'm more superior than you. He's just so whiny, he's so complainy, he's so annoying. What was the rule again? Tell the truth or at least don't lie. Okay, hello? Yeah, <laughs> you're right, mate. Yeah, um... Remember when you, uh, your hamster went missing? Oh God, yeah. Uh, then you found it pummeled and disfigured five miles from your home. Yeah, mate, that was awful, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that was me. You're joking. I'm now an improved being for telling that. Rule nine, assume the person you're listening to knows something you don't. All right, Jordan, I'm listening wherever you are. Just shut up, quit moaning and listen to me. Okay. I know things you don't, so don't expect me to listen to you. W what is happening right now? He's like... I have mixed feelings. He's at, he's just shouting at me at this point. I'm so confused. Oh, I just read my my line in Jordan Peterson's voice. He's just randomly like, randomly like in the book. I'm so confused. Jordan never gets confused because he's an alpha male. He transcends normal human emotion. He is our Messiah. Yeah. So that that wasn't a rule for life. He he literally just complained for ages. He just he just nagged for a whole minute straight. How am I supposed to take that and better myself? Do I do the same to other people? Cause that would make a really miserable world. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm walking home and there's someone cleaning the streets and I'm just trailing them like, heh, <laughs> missed a bit, missed a bit. M you missed a bit, there's gum on the floor there. Jordan Peterson told, told me to, jo Jordan Peterson told me to assume the person you're listening to knows something you don't and I know something you don't. Pick it up. <laughs> and also, can we not forget that he gave the green light to beating children? Rule 10, be precise in your speech. Confront the chaos of being. Don't try to beat it around the bush. Things are going to be terrible. Oldipus killed his dad. 
Ah yes, Oedipus. I don't know if I said that right because I've never heard of it because it's probably more religious stuff that I don't understand and it's so frustrating because it already goes on about religious stuff. He's like just a copy and paste of the Bible. And then he says, get over it, face up to the real horrors of the world. <sighs> I think throughout writing this book, Jordan slowly fell into insanity because none of that actually made any sense to me and it's just... <laughs> Holy water's really slippy. Mm. Yeah. I meant to do that. <laughs> Everything I just read there made no sense and I'm kind of afraid what's gonna come up next. Rule 11, do not bother your children while they are skateboarding. <laughs> what? This is a rule that's the real catnip for right-wingers. Want to know why the world is falling apart? It's because liberals are turning boys into girlies with their nappy pampy ways. Oh, that's why the world's falling apart. Oh. Mm. Let boys do the boy things and girls do the girl things. Nowhere in the Bible does God say anything about this trans nonsense. Oh. He went there. He went there. Oh, I don't want to read this. There's nothing wrong with men having all the best jobs and women staying home to look after the kids. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. So back off, ladies, and give us men a break. <laughs> yeah, back off, women. Get in the kitchen. Cook me a sandwich. Give us a break. Too long have we been suppressed, trying to keep the patriarchy together. Do you have any idea how hard that is? Cook, cook me a sandwich and a coffee. I want a coffee too. Oh, what was that? It was disgusting. Make me another one. I was right. I really did not know what to expect from that chapter. But now I know that boys skateboard and girls do girl things, which is... Really eye-opening. Thank you, Jordan. And if you think that's bad, listen to this one. Rule 12, pet a cat when you encounter one in the street. Oh, that's nice, Jordan. That, that really took a turn from the last one. It's a nice change of pace. And then he says, Okay, so I really am scraping the barrel now. I hate this. I hate how he's trying to sound so real and raw. I'm really scraping the barrel here. There are times to be humble, and then there's times like this. Ah, oh, my life's really falling apart. Let me read this inspirational book by Dr. Jordan Peterson. And then it just says, I'm really scraping the barrel here. Once again, Jordan, I'm putting that book down. I don't care how honest you are. I'm going to read the other many thousands of self-help books, self-help, self-help books, which say the exact same thing, but with less stuff about lobsters and uh, misogyny and homophobia. Cause that, that was a bit unnecessary. All right, a bit unnecessary. And then he says something about how the fact that he's scraping the barrel and he's being honest to us about it makes him more superior to the reader. Nice try, Jordan, but that's not, that's not how it works. He's the type to walk into Subway and be like, I'll have three cold meatballs on some cold wholemeal bread, milady. Then when he gets given exactly that, he, he'll say, what is this before me? I never asked for that. Hey, it's me from the future. Five minutes to be exact since that joke fell apart. Instead of removing it from the video, this can be a learning experience for both of us. Think before you speak. See that that itself could be a rule for life. And every every 13 year old would would read it and think it's the most profound and interesting piece of literature they've ever read. Anyway, then he goes on to say, we're all going to die, probably painfully. So just make the best of what you've got. If you see a cat, stroke it. You might feel better, though probably not. And if there are no cats, pet something else, like a dog. What actually am I reading at this point? What is this? These are just mad ramblings. Why is this book, why was it a top seller? If you're part of the Jordan Peterson Stan Club, listen to me. I could have joined that group just as easily as you did, all right? But do you know why I didn't? Because I have this thing called uh, common sense. Now, I may not be perfect. Hell, sometimes I go to bed too late. But if there's one thing I do know, don't listen to anything that man says. Do you remember the times when crying was seen as weakness? Men would rather die than shed tears from their eyes. And everyone thought, oh, we'd be better off if everyone could express their emotions properly. Well, apparently not, because Jordan Peterson cries when talking about lobsters. Jordan Peterson cries when talking about individualism, whatever that is. Loss of faith in the idea of the individual. Jordan Peterson probably cries at the do the roar scene in Shrek. Do the roar. 
My point being, this is not emotional freedom and expression. This is emotional instability, and we are watching him fall apart right in front of us. The funny thing about Jordan Peterson is that he has this old-timey feel about him. He dresses like a university professor, probably because he used to be a university professor. And when he gets fired up, he literally talks like a medieval villager. If you need evidence for this, look at this public announcement he made when he got banned off of Twitter. Hello everyone. I've essentially been banned from Twitter. I say banned, although technically I have been suspended. Imagine having so much self-importance that you feel the need to have a multi-cam video to tell the world of your apparent mistreatment on Twitter. He was literally targeting an individual and spreading masses of hate and then complains. Banned, I banned off Twitter. This communist woke manifesting agenda is the oh. Also guess who brought Jordan Peterson back? His beloved son, Elon Musk. Jordan has amassed this insanely large audience who idolize him, but not as a friend, as a father figure. But if Andrew Tate is already their father figure, Surely that would make Jordan Peterson the grandfather. That's kind of sweet though. We have grandfather Peterson, uh, dad Tate, and uncle Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. We've got a whole little sweet family coming together. No complaints from me. Wait, no, because Jordan Peterson's daughter was actually in a relationship with Andrew Tate. I'm not sure what Jordan Peterson stands for anymore but that definitely is not it. The right accuse anyone of forming an agenda, but the only group of people that I see spewing out loads of negativity is that family I just mentioned then, and they're like diluted Gotham villains. I was in class one day and I overheard, I said, do you know who Jordan Peterson is? And he responded, no, I don't. Is he one of those nutty right-wing Americans? And at this point, I just wanted to march up to the whiteboard and explain to everyone why you should not listen to this man. But instead, I just sat there at the back, slowly shaking my head, hoping someone would say, you there, shaking your head. Tell me why you are doing so. Do you not like Jordan Peterson? If not, why? And then I would say, ah, yes, thank you for giving me the introduction. I will now announce to the class why that is. But yeah, that didn't happen. I sat at the back for a reason. But the real question is, how did Jordan Peterson go from a university professor to one of the most prominent names in right-wing media? It's like he draws you in with his big words and Kermit accent, and just when he feels safe, he, he throws out some right-wing talking points. And then at that point, you either hate him or love him. And then you think back and you go, hang on a minute, he was always like this. But I just did not see it. And then you realize, wait, it's actually funny watching him have these mental breakdowns. That's the reality of the individual must be regarded as primary. And the suffering is to be regarded seriously. Also, I, I probably, I, I think I mentioned this before, but Jordan Peterson's all meat diet needs to be addressed. It's probably the, the cause for all of his hate. Jordan, why don't you stroke a cat? But if you don't have a cat, stroke a dog. Jordan, clean your room. Jordan, sit up straight with your shoulders straight. Jordan, listen to me because I know what you don't. Jordan, stop crying. That's for girls. Jordan, clean your room. Jordan, you need to you need to read more of the Bible. You're kind of falling off, Jordan Peterson. Jordan, if you're if if you're honest, then life works out. 